Okay, it's been a little while since we've been back in this one. This is our uh, MLA 2500 Dentron that was using the 8875 tubes originally. And um, gentleman had some problems with it. Quick recap, it's been through a couple people's hands. Had a couple things tore up, had a couple things missing. And the tubes for it are not available for it anyway. So we are converting it from a pair of triodes which only require high voltage and filament to a tetrode, which requires high voltage filament screen and bias as well. So what is happening is we've changed our tube sockets already. And we've seen that in the last video, but here's a lot of what's different. We pulled this tuner out on, on our, our, our load out because the input, there was a little board right here originally that was the input tuning. And it was still hooked to the actual band switch that was here. And when we got in there, all the toroids had been messed with and cracked. So we pulled that out, and I ended up having to go backwards a little bit and rip the load tune out. Because underneath the load tune, where the band switch used to be, is now going to be his input tuning. Okay. That's going to happen there. And this is how this works. There's his input tuner there. The load tuner is going to sit back on top of here. But before we put the load tuner in, we are going to... Um, get some light on this before we put the load tuner in we're going to shield this whole guy because this is the input tuning and it's right underneath the output load capacitor so we're going to shield all this like like you see the rest of that right there so when all that's done it'll be completely encapsulated and that comes around here to our coil that we make and what happens here is you see we've got our bias and screen circuit all done um our sockets are in and wired. Our input parasitic chokes are in. Filaments are wired. Um, I think we have to ground the cathode and run the switchable screen to it. But this is what's going to happen. Um, the transformer that's mounted to that fan is going to get taken apart and some padding put on it so nothing cuts into that transformer. And it's going to get mounted back on the back of the unit. And that is going to supply in through here. It's going to feed us 250 volts here for our screen, 250 volts for our bias. And then what happens is our bias network is right here. Here's our Zener diode. This is what would be the potentiometer in like a pride circuit. Only I do these pickoff taps. This, this should be a 600 ohm swiper. But the way I do it is I put these six... 100 ohm 2 watt resistors in here and I pick my voltages off um, and then from there it's going through this you got to have your RF choke and then that comes down and feeds this this handy little deal we make here now what happens here is input comes in here and then input is only tuned on this first set of six windings and then it goes to ground through here so that's basically what your radio is driving just this coil directly but in and of that right next to that on a separate winding that is not physically electronically connected to this one, the negative bias is fed in, simultaneously drawing the RF off this first coil. Now when it gets to here, it's firing it into the two, but there's another six turns past it that comes up, and that is what you see going to our input tuner on the front. So that's how that whole little deal there works. So that's all in. Um, we're getting ready to make our parasitic chokes for the top. I'll be putting the transformer on tomorrow. Putting the parasitic chokes in, finishing the automatic keying circuit, and we should be firing this bad dude up tomorrow afternoon, I'm hoping. But um, there has been, this has been quite a bit more work than I anticipated. I mean, we've rewound this choke here. We have uh, re reconditioned the air variables, we've reconditioned the relay. Did a bunch of soldering on this board over here. High voltage is back all the way up to 2,700 volts. Um, we got a nice solid six for our filaments over here. So I think it's going to be just fine. A few more steps, and we got some nice door knob caps for our bypass um, and the right value. So these are um, these are going to handle whatever them two 400 A's got to throw at it. Now the cool thing is, and we just did another box like this that had tubes that weren't discontinued but were tubes that you had to wait a pretty significant amount of time to get and most people aren't willing to wait for that so what we did on that one was it is basically the same power supply that i use 
for 250Bs and 400As and whatnot. So what we did was we took that eight, it was a single 800A, and uh, that video is going to go up soon. You'll see there's a, we made a deck, put three 250Bs in it, and redid the top rail like we're going to do on this one. Now he can put anything from a 150B to a 400A in that box and order them anywhere and have them in a day or two. This gentleman has a bunch of perks coming after this conversion. A, he's not going to have to manually key it anymore. We're making it automatic key. B, once again, he can go anywhere from a 150B to a pair of 400As in here. Um... Um, he's going to be uh, nice, smooth, and put on the tuning. All these, you know, everything's just still going to use the metering. Still, for the most part, works. Um, it's you know, he, it's going to be a nice amp. I'm, I'm projecting 1800 to 22 PEP, um, an easy kilowatt of RMS. It's going to be nice. So um, keep your eyes open. The next day or two, this one's going to be done, folks. Thanks. Seven threes. All right, boys and girls, here's another little quick section on here. We had to add input tuning. As, if you saw the last video and some of the pictures, you'll see that um, we had a Toradial input tuning section here that had been uh, damaged by one of the previous hands, as I will call it. Um, so what we did was we put, you know, the variable tuner in there that comes over to our heterodyne network down here that mixes our bias and input signal but it's also going under this if you saw the last video you see that it came around here and it goes to an air variable right here which is just tuning our input but we had to shield it because on top of this right here is our load output is our load tuner for the output so I can't you can't have your input tuning trying to stabilize what's coming in while you got, you know, two kilowatts of PEP over the top of it getting loaded up in an air variable. So when you guys do this kind of stuff, you got to remember, you, you got to think about how what you're doing is going to affect what's already there. And if you're intending on using whatever's being affected, you better figure out how to get past it. In this situation, you know, this whole amp's been a, a, a challenge with the space limitations. But, you know... In the hands of a lesser place, it'd probably be a problem, but it's not, it, it, it is a problem here. It's just going to take some time. But here, sometimes you got to make shit. You know, you can't, you know, most guys will just stick that tuner in there and hope it works. No, put it in there, isolate it, make sure you got it done, because normally that tuner lives on the bottom side of one of these amps. And in this one, we can't achieve that. So we had to make it its own little cubby hole shielded with metal tape. Now I'm not so worried about it getting saturated with RF. Now, it's time to finish putting our, oh, just dropped it, automatic king circuit in. This guy is going in there, and I think we're going to hide him over here somewhere. And it's going to come through one of these holes and come over here and fire our regular relay, which is being rewired a little bit because for the triode, uh, the third pole turns something else off and on. Whatever that metering was, we're not going to use. It's been taken out. But we do need to turn the screen off and on. So that the tube doesn't sit there and break in oscillation. So what we're going to do is that third pole on here, when this when this relay clamps, is going to turn our 300 volts on simultaneously to the to the tubes. So there's where we're at so far. So there it is. It's all encapsulated. It's got its own little shielded lifestyle in there. We've got our automatic keying relay set up, ready to go. The bottom side is looking pretty good. Like in the last video I showed you, we got. Our AC is going to come in here and here, and it's going to give us our negative bias, which comes and rides down here, gets fed into this coil. Our input is going to come up from up here and get fed into this coil. And then this is just going off to ground. So what's going to happen is the negative bias is somehow pulls the RF across here. You've got a nice mix, and then your bias and your RF are, are heterodyne and shot into the control grid of the tube so then down here is our screen circuit um which is this is now here on a pride and we got my partner over here working on a pride right now but in a pride you'll see that tuner on the back i don't i don't use those because they they blow a lot i make that it's supposed to be a 600 ohm load 
I make that 600 ohm load out of six 100 ohm two watt resistors. And then I pick my bias voltage off where I want it. That's closest enough. And believe it or not, it's a lot more stable and it's cheaper than a bunch of Zener diodes and making you know, a real... You can make a very stable circuit. It just costs a little more. It takes a little more time. Um, this I like because it's simple. It's stable. And it's, it's inexpensive. Um, and it fits. I mean, you got to remember, guys, this is my whole working area in this thing. I got a half inch of space to put an entire half of an amp in. And we pulled it off. So now the other thing I'm concerned about is I may have to shield the top of this coil because this is still input right here. And I'm a little concerned, once again, think about how everything's going to affect everything else. I'm a little concerned about that sitting right next to my tubes. So I think I'm going to make a little bitty uh, hat that goes around it, give it a little jimmy hat, and cover it with some metal tape. And I think then we're going to go ahead and move on. Now that I'm sitting here looking at that, I think that's exactly what we're going to do because it doesn't make sense for me to go through all the work to make sure that my air variable isn't getting saturated when my heterodyne coil is sitting right next to the tubes. That's kind of silly. I'm going to have to go ahead and shield that too. So that's where we're at with that. Once again, think about what's going on. Um, there is not a pattern for what I'm doing to this amp. You know, we're, 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 we're flying by the seat of our ass around here on this one. Basically trying to turn a paperweight into something functional again. And, you know, there was no foresight in them, you know, knowing that the tubes were not going to be available at some point. Um, you, know, we, you know, today, we assume shit's going to get changed and get thrown away and you get new stuff. But back when they made this stuff, it was made to use until you die and your kids die. Well, the one thing they failed to keep into consideration was this tube was going to get canceled, gone, can't get it. The only option for it that I could find is a bigger one, a bigger triode, an 8857, I believe. But that's an $850 tube, and this power supply will only carry one of them. Internally giving you half the power, he'd still have to manually key it. It'd just be a mess. So now when we're done, like I said, he can put anything from a 150B to a 400A in here, a pair of them. And he's not going to have to key it manually. His metering's still going to work decent. So, you know, he's still going to have a nice functional amp. It's, you know, this, this Dentron that turned in. You know, back in the day, this was almost a $3,000 amp in the late 70s, early 80s. Back in that day. This was a $2,500 piece. So what do you think a piece built like this should be worth today? It shouldn't die. So we're going to, you know, we got to do what we got to do. So next is I'm going to shield, RF shield that coil and give it some safety. And then we are going to proceed with making our, high, our uh, parasitic chokes for the top, putting the automatic keying circuit in, put our load cap back in, it's going to be time to check some voltages at that point and get the, we got to get the transformer on the back, obviously, and light up these other circuits that we've made. But you can see a lot of hand-done work's been done in here. You know, the tube sockets have been changed. The high-voltage choke has been rewound. Um, you know, we had to make our, our mixer circuit for the input. We had to make an input tuning circuit, isolate it. Automatic keying circuits had to be made. Um, basically, this whole side of the amp is getting rewired and two more power supply sections added to the bottom side of it to achieve removing a set of obsolete triodes so that we can use some readily available tetrodes is what we're doing now it's low drive automatic key and any tube you want to put in it you can get on this block without having to wait for it to come from ukraine or whatever and this one you can't even get so that was in here you can't even get so it doesn't matter this was a paperweight so that's where we're at. We're going to put this in a series of videos, take some pictures, and we're going to move on. I say we're going to give our coil there a little metal jimmy hat, make sure he's good, and get on with the rest of it. So, 7-3s. We'll see you.